Hey guys, welcome back to the crew campaign. This is mission three. So the situation here, I'm not going to read the first part. It's uh, it's basically an argument between uh, Dmitry Tarasov and Peter Mikhailovich, arguing about the kind of work they're doing. Uh, Tarasov is obviously trying to suck up to his superiors for a promotion, and Mikhailovich is not super happy about it. Um, but yeah, it's it's interesting, but I'm not going to go and read it. I'm going to spare you that pain. Uh, so our task is with the full crew and Safranov as a passenger, fly the predefined route and collect two additional VIP passengers. So we have the same requirements or limitations as last time. Average speed, 190 kph. Uh, average flight duration this time is 60 minutes, one hour. To maintain a comfortable smooth flight, same limitations. Vertical speed, no more than 7 meters per second. Roll angle, no more than 13 degrees. Pitch angle, no more than 11 degrees. And do not allow an overload of more than 2.5 Gs. So we have to fly smooth the same as we did last time. That's fair. Uh, looks like this time we are departing from Amulet, same place as last time. Uh, we are heading to Galengic. We're going to land at one of the ramps there, I guess. And uh, then from there, additionally, as a training and combat exercise, interact with the Russian Navy as per the approved plan. So enter the training area, not later than 17, 25 hours. And if we scroll down, we start at 16, 30. So it gives us 45 minutes, uh, actually, sorry, 55 minutes to get in there, which should be plenty of time. Uh, contact the ATC, land on the Admiral Kuznetsov, That should be fun. Not later than 1740 hours, again, should be fine, assuming we, uh, you know, keep a decent pace. And then we have uh, NDB beacon for the Naval Group, 888 kilohertz. We've also got a beacon for Galengic at 1000, and of course for Amulet at 707. So once we meet up with them and land on the boat, we get to come home. Seems like another triangle. So in our briefing images, here's where we are at Amulet. We're going to head out this way. Um, course of 117 here. Yeah, 117 for 19. Or sorry, 14.9 uh, to Galengic. And then from there, we'll head out over the water, 257 for 36. Uh, out to the Admiral Kuznetsov where we'll land and then head back for 48 kilometers, or for 048 for 27 kilometers, sorry, all the way back to Amulet. All right, simple enough, right? Should be fine. Weather looks um, overcast, but otherwise okay. Visibility looks better than last time, honestly. We have a landmark for Galengic here. So there's a um, radio tower, a comms tower, whoops. Yeah, so there's a comms tower here I guess we're looking for. <clears throat> and then it gives us some different courses into the four ramps. Uh, four, three, two, and one here. So I'm not sure which one they're going to send us to. But I guess we need to be aware of all of them. So that we can be sent to any of them. Oh, okay. So we are going to ramp three to um, stall 12. So right in the middle of ramp three. Okay, so that is the second one down here. So to the left of the tower in this big section here. <clears throat> I suppose we could do that. All right, let's give it a go. So today we're flying generals. Yeah, be careful with this kind of cargo. Helicopter visual checks complete. Aircraft documentation is on board. Doors and hatches are closed. Helicopter checks out. No remarks. Altimeter pressure correlation coefficient tables checked. Altimeters checked. Total fuel load is 1,254 kilos. Takeoff weight is 9,140 kilos. Reserve fuel accounted for and included in the total fuel load. Okay, crew reports accepted, helicopter inspected, no remarks. Let's get on with it. I'll request startup. All right, so before I request startup and they launch into their whole dialogue about everybody boarding and stuff that's, I'm sure, about to happen, uh, I wanted to quickly mention that in the first video, somebody commented that, wondering why I didn't use the NS430, the GPS navigation unit. Uh, for a couple of reasons. First of all, the GPS nav, what I typically use it for is navigating to an airfield or to a set of known coordinates. 
neither of which I was doing in the first mission. Um, what I forgot was that it uh, it automatically loads up the flight plan if it's defined in the mission editor. So you can just turn it on and follow it along and it'll tell you where to go. Um, the other reason, though, is that I kind of like to use the systems that are on the hip, especially when the mission editor or when the mission itself doesn't call for the use of GPS nav, when it encourages you to use things like Doppler nav and radio nav. Um, I like to try to stick to what was intended by the mission creators. But for this one, for the sake of uh, let's do it, um, we're going to try to use the NS430 GPS nav and take a look at some basic functionality of that. Nothing too crazy. All right, so let's uh, request startup here, F10, Amulet 5.1 startup. See if we get uh, see if we get clearance to take off or to start up this time. Amulet five one startup. Five long clean start up. Hooray! Three meters, two one eight degrees, QFE seven six three, few clouds at five hundred meters. Awesome. Okay. Um Yeah. All right, let's do it. Oh boy, any turn of events. So are we going to complete this flight plan? Or is this one going to change as we go? Now I'm going to throw in some ARC-9 frequencies from the briefing while we wait for Engine 1 to spool. Uh, I'm going to set in the frequencies for where we are now and for the boats. Loud and clear. And check complete flight in and switch panels operational. No damage. Seat belt checked, locked and secure. Passenger seats and sofas checked and secured. Refrigerator is filled with caviar and cognac. Without the helicopter. Oh, by the way, Safranov is boarding. Commander, we are setting the heading. 111 degrees. Roger, I will set the heading indicator. Distance to base is 19 kilometers. Safe height along the route is 350 to 400 meters. using the first and the third, and we're just going to use GPS nav to get into Galenjik. Fires one two three generators one two. 
Okay, um, let's get them some heat in the back, first of all. I can't believe I'm using the, the kerosene heater. <laughs> honestly, I never honestly expected to have a legitimate reason to turn it on other than to laugh that it, it's there and it works. Or to have a legitimate reason to turn on cabin lighting in the back. I guess I don't fly enough missions and campaigns. I just do a lot of multiplayer and uh, self-made little demo scenarios. All right, that about does it. Uh, do a quick sweep left to right here. Make sure our volumes for the radios are up. We're selected. All of our stuff is on. APU is off. Warnings and cautions are out. Arc 9 is tuned, set for the Navy right now. Stuff is on, lights are on. Everything we need is on except for... I went right past it, anti-icing. We want that on. Gear rocks, pressures, and temperatures look okay. A little cold, maybe. They'll warm up. Okay, so, as far as the GPS nav goes, this is our little unit right here. I'm just going to pause my head tracking. All right, so this is the NS430. It's uh, a little clunky to use. It's model and the real thing, but you interact with it by scrolling your mouse wheel around the different knobs. So it's, um, if you had enough actual physical bindings, I would highly recommend getting some of those. But I don't know any, uh, any products that would have the correct kinds of bindings. You basically need scroll wheels and lots of them. So we just uh, scroll up on this little power button here, little C on it. And then we get OK, we hit Enter. Hit OK again. And then it flashes message, so we hit message twice. All right, so it's already loaded up with everything we need right here. If we just hit range down to zoom in, we can already see there's our waypoint. So we're going to head this way and then turn south a little bit towards Galenjik. And then we'll head out into the water and go to waypoint three out here to meet the boats. And then we come back and there's four, five, and six for landing. Um, we're going to do just a little bit here. We're going to go into menu, set up map, hit enter. And then we're going to hit uh, enter again. We can toggle between north up and track up. I like track up just kind of so that I can always fly straight ahead. Um, but it's really your choice, whatever you want. And then hit clear to back out of that. In there, you can also set up other things. So you can come down and do auto zoom. You can do landing data and other things in there. Um, there's a lot more to this than I'm going to show you today. You can change um, which data fields it shows, which is nice. The downside to this, at least from what I've seen is that there's no way to actually store this and have it stay the same. Next time you load up your helicopter, you'll have to redo everything. So I typically don't mess with much. Okay. Have our course laid in. We're all started up. Unpause my head tracking. Get ourselves trimmed for takeoff. Release the brake. Two stage pull up, bring in some collective, get a little bit light on wheels, and bring in a little more with some pedal, and we should just come up. A little more windy today. Don't need quite as much right cyclic, like I'm being pushed as it is. Alright, and we're just going to head out the same way as before. Right out here over this building between the two trees. little low. Okay, so once again, we're trying to be fairly calm about this. 
uh, need to keep a smooth flight, so we're looking at our climb rate and our airspeed and our bank and everything else, trying to make sure that we're keeping those all minimized. can do. Switch to the middle. 126.3. Back here. And just follow that. Keep the pink line ahead of us. Coming up on waypoint one. Make a bit of a right turn into waypoint two. That's crazy. Never saw a modern combat fleet before. A message on here as we whoop, approach our target altitude. Just confirm that. Reduce our altitude some. Pick up some speed while we're at it. Looking for that average speed of 190. We're down at 170 here. Altitude is better. It's our upper limit here, 400. Flying with a pressure altimeter this time instead of the radar on the right side. We don't have the radar altimeter. Visibility is better today. It's not snowing. We're still icing though. It's uh, minus five. Rotor RPM is good, 95%. Engine RPM is good, 88%. Forward level flight at 350 meters. 190 kilometers per hour. For the right to the airport at DB. Descent mode, contact the airfield. Sounds like the guy you'd get in a voice recording system when you call your bank or something. Glenjin Tower 22051, on approach, preparing for landing. 22051, good afternoon. You're allowed to approach strictly to the right of the runway. We'll land at Fargate. Tower 
Okay, so we have that from our briefing. We are making a right turn now. See if we can land from the right seat, hey? How about that? So that's at uh, landing pad, or landing area. What is it? A number three, anyway. Keep that speed up a bit. Altitude's got to come down. Ramp. That's the one. Ramp three. the big one to the left of the tower. Which I guess is probably straight ahead. our main area. We are this one here, if I'm not mistaken. Oh no, there's the tower in the middle, so we are that big one. That's number four. This is number three. Losing ETL. Keep an eye on everything. Icing again. I shouldn't be sitting here. I should be staying faster until I'm closer. Because this is a bumpy ride for passengers. That's not cool. Right in between these two. A50s, I think they are. Quite on the line. Close enough. I'll take it. Two 
organic declination. The distance to the training and combat area is 16.5 kilometers. NDB, 888 kilohertz. Hmm. Hmm. Passenger heading fixed. Passengers, fasten your seatbelts, please. Anyway, 251 is where we're going, so there. 324 is directly backwards. I guess we have to back out of here. Don't cross the runway. That's fine. And we can also follow the needle this time. So, we are uh, trimmed still for takeoff. Hasn't changed. Two-stage pull-up. Get ourselves light on wheels. And then bring in a little more collective, and up we go. All right, so I'm just going to come up, get the tail clear of these guys. We'll head straight back out this way, and then make our turn. meters it is we are here we arrive hooray objective one two seven decimal five we can do that one two seven decimal five done now we're going to follow the beacon as well as our course it's nice to see that they agree We need to come down. We're a little high. Katya, what do you want to ask? How should I address the passenger during the flight? The general is very natural. Do they have some other room? It's very easy, Katya. Call them Admiral of the Army or General Third Rank of the Navy. Don't listen to him, Katya. Simply call him Comrade Admiral. Mikhailich. Don't make fun of Katya. I did not hear the last line of that. Anyway, we are up too high still, so we gotta come down. There's the oil rigs that we were landing on last time, I think. Ships have moved. Speed is good. Altitude's still a little high. We're working on that. Rotor RPM is good. Fuel is good. Engine RPM is good. We're largely on course. Very pretty. Altitude needs to come down just a little more. Speed is still good. We are drifting left considerably. Kick the ball.
<laughs> okay. I have to do a case one. Okay, sure. We can do a case one. They really do assume that you know this stuff. A little off course. So there's our... Hell, oh, what are they shooting at? That's cool. Oh, over there. Wonder if those are drones. Splash. That's really cool. Which way is the boat facing? Okay, so do we need to actually come in from behind or can I just enter the pattern as if I had already done a break and just fly downwind and then turn around? We'll see. I have no idea if they're going to make me do a loop. I'm too high. I need to come down a lot. So what I get every time I look away from instruments and everything and go to external cam, I end up climbing or whatever. Usually I end up easing pressure on the cyclic. I should be retrimming. little fast now, but that'll help us make up for the little slow earlier. Let's come down to 200. Okay, that's better. Makes sense. We That's it, hey. Okay. Okay, 28 kph to the left of the ship. We can do that. We're also climbing a lot. I'm not paying attention. Well, 
head down. And then we're going to need to slow to 28 kph. My approach is, you know, totally not what's on the books. I'm sorry, I can't read the documentation and learn as I'm flying. Suppose I'll be doing the case one after I get into position. So for now, I'm just going to get myself to the left of the ship. I think we'll start with that. Start our descent here and start slowing as well since we need to be so slow. And we'll just come up beside them. Is that the Super Kuznetsov or is it the old one? Looks like the new one. Hopefully I don't get in trouble for crossing over this way. You know, right in the middle of their path. Oh. Okay. Alright. Fine. All right, I won't go around and do a whole pattern, then I'll just come in and land on position six, which is somewhere up there. Well, that was, you know, not at all what was prescribed. Pretty sure that's six ahead of me. Yep. We need to be faster. used to landing from the right seat. on it. I tend to undershoot still, but hey, we're close. Welcome aboard, Comrade Admiral. Hampus Akanapsis, the bottom of the Golden Cabin Cruise is on the left side of the tarot. Have a pleasant flight. Greetings, Princess. Where can I go in your air castle? <laughs> what? Commander, heading to return is 042 degrees according to the tablet. I'll set up a beacon on Amulet, 707 kilohertz to be more accurate. The takeoff weight has increased by an additional 80 kilos. Okay, we should wait for instructions. It's gone, so I guess we can go. Of course, I wasn't looking the right way to see it launch. Zero five one. I 
we'll do, and we'll follow our last waypoint back. Uh, we can also flip our Arc 9 over to Reserve, which puts us on 707, and now it should roll around and agree with our course, more or less. Okay. Trim for takeoff. Bring in some collective light on wheels. Two-stage pull-up. That was better. Head straight out over the boat and then come left. If I didn't have a VIP who cared about bumpy rides, we'd have gone off the ski ramp. Got a friend over there in sight. It's a Kamov. A 32 or something, I forget. I don't know my Kamov models that well. Settle for something in between what the beacon says and what I was told. Oh, well, it's because we're way off course, that's why. So our GPS nav will give us where the original waypoint was and our course back. Probably just follow the beacon, frankly. We need to climb. A little fast, but that's okay. We'll slow down as we ascend. That's cool. Objective two two zero five one. Airborne departing the area. Have a nice day. Two two over to one. Roger. Happy holiday. Good day. You too. That's right where we want to be. Good. So we're going to follow the land up here once it opens up to do our nice gradual turnaround so that we're facing the right way to land at Amulet. My greatest... One of my two weaknesses in this thing. Not extending far enough for landing and leaving myself um, for too steep of an approach. And undershooting when I do get there. two things I can't seem to stop doing. About time we contacted number of seats could control. One, two, four, six, you say. I think I could do that. I guess they say climb regardless of whether you're going up or down, right? Every time I switch seats to go and change radio frequencies, I ease pressure on the cyclic and uh, climb and slow and all that good stuff. Careful of our descent rate. I may have touched on seven. Hopefully not. Yeah, 
Okay, speed is still just a little faster than what we want necessarily, but we're making up time. Altitude looks better. Okay, and we can hold that. We are drifting a little left. Fix that. Still on course according to our GPS. Now it's gonna we reduce the range on this. Again. Oop, dropping a little much. Opposite problem. We are supposed to make a left turn, go around the bay. Follow our GPS turn when we're supposed to. Point four. All right, let's start turning because we've got to do this gently. Already too high. Must be slow. In for out of Brandon Dickford. Landing, landing course for 75. Ready to land. Ready to land. The passenger is seated and seat belt fastened. Ready to land. Let's start slowing. Turning again. Aim for about 150 kph. Don't bank too much. Keeping ourselves basically coordinated as we come around. Watch that bank angle. A little slow. I need to watch the gauges less and watch outside more. It's a problem that most flight simmers end up with because we don't have that uh, we don't have any kind of feedback we don't actually feel anything so we're more reliant on our gauges than you would be in the real scenario so it's sending me over there is that right Get that airspeed up. Altitude's still good. Following the GPS, I gotta come left. Oh, it's back there. No, I'm 
Ah, uh, hmm. Right, it gives me a loop. So we're going around. Aha! <laughs> I didn't go far enough. I thought it looked wrong. Don't bank so much. Need more speed. I'm going to ruin my mission rating over this one. Whatever time I made up on the way over here, I just lost. See, so staring at my GPS, not looking outside where I'm going. Perfect example of what not to do. We are over there. So, yeah, instead of following the line on the screen, use your head. Okay, altitude's got to come down. Speed's coming up. go around and do this one right this time. <laughs> you know, actually look out our windows instead of staring at a screen. Because that's where we're going over there. If I had been paying any amount of attention. Okay, so now we come down. We can start slowing. Start turning. Not too much. Okay, that's about all the descending we want to do for now. Don't bank too much. There we go. This is looking better. Keep that speed up. All the real pilots watching me fly right now are going, oh, this is awful, I can't look. Okay, um, reducing speed and altitude. Get ourselves under 100 kph now. I'll try to hold ETL until we're a bit closer this time. Let's bleed that off now. Bring in more collective. And down we go. All right, let's have a look at that. Touchdown. I'll take it. Okay, should I just start shutting down then? Sure, let's do it. I was too slow. Good. Alright, well, I'll take it. 
considering the go-around and the uh, awful mess at the carrier, <laughs> I'm surprised I even got that. Time to do our shutdown. Uh, I need to go and review the shutdown procedures again. Because I'm probably doing things wrong, but I'm basically just shutting everything off in the opposite order. There. Arc 9's off. Over here. Autopilot's off, anti-icing's off. I forgot to switch this to... It was on priming the whole time. That's okay. Off, off. All of these are off. Okay, I think that's everything that requires our generators. That's been powered off. Off. Okay. Now we can kill the generators, one and two. The rectifiers. I didn't wait long enough for the heater to come off. That's all that was. Okay. And then we can kill our engines. Actually, you know what? We need to throw. We need to throttle down. Corrector left. And then we're supposed to wait a while. We're not going to do that. Kill the fuel. of our circuit breakers come off, and I will review the shutdown procedure for the next mission. And again, I'm supposed to wait, oh yeah, I forgot my radar altimeter, I'm supposed to wait until rotor RPM comes down uh, to about 15%, I believe. I'm definitely not supposed to throw the brake here, but I'm gonna. and our inverters and our batteries.